If I asked you which of these paths will get you from point A to point B the fastest, which would you choose? Assuming you have no mobility items, nothing like that, just your normal movement. Well, the correct answer is actually path 3. Simply put, it's because it has the most elevation change. But to really understand why path 3 is the fastest, you have to completely understand how player movement works in Fortnite. So in this video, I'll teach you exactly that. Everything about player movement and thus, how to get around the map faster. Because while mobility items change almost every update, your normal movement is always the same and you have to make hundreds of decisions a game about how to rotate. Knowing how it works can save you seconds each time that add up to minutes throughout the game. The first thing to note is that running up elevation is faster than running on flat ground. Their horizontal speed is the same, but that means you have to be moving faster when going up elevation for them to be the same. You run 5.5 meters per second on flat ground, so when you're running up a 45 degree incline, you're actually running 7.8 meters per second, or about 41% faster. You might say, well, that doesn't really matter if it's not in the direction you want to go, but all of that extra vertical distance can be converted into horizontal distance with the next topic, sliding. But first, you might have noticed that my ping is lower than usual. That's because I started using Gear Up Booster a network optimizer that both reduces ping and eliminates packet loss. It works by analyzing the path your packets take to the server and changing it to a more optimal path. I tested it myself multiple times and even against other network optimizers and found that it always came out on top. It made an especially big difference for me when playing on other regions like Europe or Middle East. Constant 0% packet loss and the ping lowered by over 30 milliseconds in some cases. And if you're on a console, no worries, they've got you covered. Because they also have a gaming router called the Hyper EV made to lower latency on all consoles. The best gaming router you can get for under $100, plus it includes two free ethernet cables. And yes, it's completely safe to use. It can't get you banned, and many pros have been using it for years. Plus, they have a free trial, so it's completely free to try out and see how much it lowers your ping. Big thanks to Gear Up for sponsoring this portion of the video. But back to sliding. When it comes to sliding to gain speed, you don't just want to slide all the way down. Sliding downhill doesn't actually help you gain speed. The falling down is what's giving you the speed. The only thing sliding does is stop your momentum from being halted. If you aren't sliding, it doesn't matter how much momentum you have, as soon as you land it goes straight to zero. So anytime you land with momentum, you have to slide if you want to keep it. But the longer you slide, the more momentum you're losing. You should instead be jumping instantly upon landing. This does three things. It keeps you in the air and falling for as much time as possible to keep gaining momentum. The slide stops your momentum from resetting and the jump converts the downward momentum into forward momentum. When you normally jump, regardless of terrain, you jump straight upwards. But when you jump from a slide, instead of jumping straight upwards, you instead jump perpendicular to the surface. So on flat ground, that means straight up. But if you're sliding down, it changes your jump angle so that jumping actually propels you forward. If you compare just sliding to slide jumping over any decline, there's about a 50% increase in horizontal speed with slide jumping. So that's how you can gain insane amounts of momentum from slide jumping down an incline. Sometimes too much. Gotta be careful not to do too much and die to fall damage. But what about jump fatigue? Jump fatigue typically doesn't apply on declines even if you always jump as soon as you hit the ground because of how jump fatigue is tracked. It doesn't care about how long you're on the ground, it only cares about how often you're jumping. When on flat ground, after just two jumps you're tired so the third jump will both not jump as high and slow your movement speed. But if you space the jumps out even just a little, then you're able to avoid jump fatigue. So when slide jumping downhill, because it takes longer to hit the ground each time, your jumps are naturally more spaced out avoiding jump fatigue. But that also means when going uphill you shouldn't slide or jump for speed. As a matter of fact, you shouldn't do it on flat ground either. I often see players running around the map and sprint jumping to try and get around faster, but it's actually just slower. Yes, the sprint jump is slightly faster than just sprinting, but it takes so much more of your stamina that you run out faster, and in the long run it slows you down. On flat ground, sprinting and jumping is faster than normal running, but just sprinting alone is even faster. But the fastest way is to do a single sprint jump, then slide and b-hop twice to conserve the momentum from the sprint jump as much as possible while using less stamina than running the whole way. Not only is this the fastest way to move around, but it also allows you to take other actions while moving. So you can pop heals, farm objects, build, or shoot people around you while still moving at maximum speed. Now the best part comes from combining all of this information. If you know that going downhills increases your speed, and that you can re-farm while running at full speed, then if you're already say at max wood, it's just a net gain to use ramps to gain speed if you're running through a forest or somewhere with extra wood around. Yeah, it's more work, but building this habit just flat out increases your movement speed for free. You just sprint jump, then place a backwards ramp to slide and jump off of. Then you keep the momentum with another slide jump. During the second and third slide jumps is when you can farm objects around you to get the materials back that you just spent. Just look at how much faster I'm able to make this rotate than if I hadn't built anything. And if you're in an area where the ground is weirdly between grid tiles and the ramps don't want to place right, you can place a forward ramp first to 
to connect the backwards ramp to. Now I'm not saying to always do this. You know you still need to stay aware and adapt based on the situation, but it's good to have the option where you just need to get from point A to point B as fast as possible. Now I'm not going to go into how to move the fastest with every mobility item possible because we'd be here all day. Plus it'll probably just change again next chapter. But in general, you just want to abuse slide jumps to keep momentum as much as possible. For example, with the grapplers now, it's better to grapple downward and keep slide jumping than to just grapple forward. The same was true of nitro rings, shockwaves, etc. So in the next chapter's mobility has us flying out of cannons or who knows what else. Just remember to try and conserve the momentum as much as possible. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Farewell.